We're live here at Club Dubbo for the 2023-24 New South Wales State Championships. We're up to the women's singles final with Dawn Heyman up against St John's Park of St John's Park, up against Sarah Boddington of Foster. Our marker today, Claire Brown, joining in country, Lee Stinson. Thanks, Andrew. Should be a good game in store here. Both ladies. Progressed through semi-final play this morning. We saw Dawn Heyman defeat Louise Cronin, 25 shots to four. And Sarah Boddington with a come from behind, 25-20 win over Cheryl Lee Stewart. And the big question is, with the form Dawn is in, can Sarah get over the top and claim the her second or third state singles title? She did win the title couple of years ago up at Tamworth yeah, no doubt she can don't think it's any secret to those watching online that Dawn has taken all before her so far over the last week and a half state mixed pairs champion, state triples state pairs now here to the final of the singles she will start favourite as you and say, Sarah, a very competitive singles player, also heavily featured in state championship action at this event and many others over the past decade. So she won't be a an easy task. Another one of our New South Wales Keno Blues, Sarah, one of our leads in that team. So she has got the draw game to try and take it at dawn here. Yeah, Sarah is probably one of the best draw bowlers in the state. In the women's game, at least, anyway. And oh, Dawny's on fire lately. Dawn will roll the jack for the first end. And we're underway. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how these ladies adapt to conditions so we are about 1 30 p.m here local time these ladies semi-finals dawn was finished at about 10 15 sarah boddington at about 11 a.m so it's you know, a good two or three hour gap for these ladies while we've had our men's semi-finals go on and we'll see as we say who adjusts if there has been a speed change in this green. So they both had the two trial ends just before this end number one. You, know, you would expect a little bit of a change in the green over that time. You see Sarah with a very good opening start. You will see a couple of little blank names there just waiting for confirmation of who's got through in a couple of the championships. I'm just waiting for someone to type them in. Perfect weight there with Dawn second. Been an outstanding two weeks so far here at Dubbo and in the background in the club and on the greens there's plenty of players arriving. We have fours action tomorrow. They start tomorrow afternoon in all five disciplines of fours. And tomorrow morning we see the further three singles finals. The game we will feature will be the senior men's singles. Also here tomorrow morning will be senior women's and the open reserve. Miss Dawn, well, as you see, three pretty good bowls here from Dawn to start. Where is Sarah holding still? With her first bowl, for about a metre of weight from a previous. And that's not a bad attempt here from Sarah. She rests on that bowl. Just works its way through the gap. So at least one to Sarah, possibly two. Dawn 
just outside. Really good weight to come up to those bowls. We said about adjusting to this green. Some really good draw shots first up by both ladies. Sarah coming in with her last. It's a little short, so confirmation in a moment whether it is one or two to Sarah Boddington to open things up. And just two, two shots to Sarah. Get us underway. Sarah Boddington, first to score, picks up a double. Rolling a very similar length to what we saw on end number one. Jack probably three to three and a half metres from the tee. And Jack all the way down to the tee at the clubhouse end. Get you some updates shortly from our other two venues, the Sporties and Macquarie Club. Action there this morning was round three in the senior men, senior women and open reserve singles. Was a lovely opening bowl from Dawn back towards the club end. Senior men's singles at Macquarie Club. Greg Brims from Kempsey McClay RSL is playing Warren Shipley from Soldiers Point. And at the Sporties Club, Taraji's Robbie Warren is up against Gary Corey from Cabramatta. Dawn. Sticking to a forehand. It's going to do enough to count. Interesting that the two ladies have chosen opposing sides of the rink. To start off, Sarah, this backhand proving to be a little bit wider on the other side of the green. up a little short there with a third so Dawn with the opportunity to add another it looks as though she will it's a third in for Dawn Heyman well played Sarah may have slightly blocked off the draw with a last, so yes, she does look to come down to the head. Gives us a chance to talk about our senior women's semi-finals. Over at the Macquarie Club, Christine Gordon from Harbord playing Wendy Clark from Ballina. And at Dubbo Sporties, it's Sue Moore from Engadine playing Vicky Turner from Warilla. Wait until the conclusion of this end and then keep you up to date with our open reserve singles. Good shot. Sarah looks to play here. Let's turn over to the forehand. So she's going to try and work through those bowls of dawn. Is it just on the draw or is it a little bit over? That's got any weight it will hold off down this forehand side. Just finds that gap. So Dawn with almost a metre to draw a fourth shot. A 
Or Sarah who picked up two on the opening end. Torn with a chance now to double that. Hoping to get past these front bowls with a good weight. Oh, she knows she's a lot shorter, so it will be three. Slightly disappointed to not add another, but nonetheless, she takes the lead. Three shots to two. Well, now, given our scoreboard a kick, it's got into line. Apologies for not knowing some of the players' first names, but in the Open Reserve single semi-finals, Jordan Morrow, the local boy from Dubbo City, he's taking on Smith from Cabramatta. That's over at the Macquarie Club. And at the Sporties, Ryan from Grafton District Services up against Mainline Reynolds from NBC Sports. So it keeps you up to date now with all our semi-finals. You see those scores rolling through at the bottom of our coverage. And we've got a special guest, Andrew, join us in commentary this afternoon, Club Dubbo Chairman Tony Spears. Welcome, Tony. G'day, Lee. G'day, Andrew. How are you going today? Oh, excellent. My first call of the day. <laughs> it's a bit warm in this office this afternoon, isn't it? That's all the hot air coming out of us, mate. <laughs> we have left the, uh, the door open, but... Yeah. Need some window vents in yeah, the yeah. I know you're moving the office here at the club at some point in time, the bowls office. Yeah, we decided it was too hot for Brownie. <laughs> now we're actually put, some of the renovations, mate. Uh, we're actually putting a terrace out the front of the club, looking over number one green, uh, 4.8, I think it is, 4.8 wide. So top of screen, if anyone's looking on from <clears> home, that's that's sort of the windows to the far right of screen is where we are. That's yeah, the area. exactly, yeah. So we're... The, Currently, the camera is pointing back at the club. So, yeah, so where those seats are along there, the terrace will come just to the back of those seats. Those seats will obviously come out. But, um, yeah, so it, it, it will make a big difference and um, adds about oh, nearly 200 square metres to the area of the club. And Brownie's office will move up to the left of the screen there, um, just near where the current stairwell is. Great effort from Sarah. Dawn just checking who's holding shot. And indication was that Dawn is still holding. Reasons behind some of the renovations, mate? Is that just capacity issues? You just <laughs> outgrown the current building? Uh, yeah, to a degree, Lee. Yeah, uh, mostly the, the issue that we've got is our kitchen. Our kitchen is uh, running out of capacity, basically. Um, it's been hasn't been renovated for 25 odd years and um, so we're looking to build a new kitchen and actually open up the whole inside of the club but one step at a time we have to create some more seating space for people before we close off other seating space fair enough we saw dawn's <coughs> third bowl there just turn the sarah boddington bowl in for shot so it is now sarah holding one looking to come up there and turn her own bowl over or work away in behind it didn't quite get another shot but won't be too displeased with that getting to the back of the rink second bowl from the back so Dawn with the option here pick what weight she wants to play we'll see what she's favouring here Tony whether it is just Half a metre or a metre over, or whether she wants to play all the way to the ditch. I'm just still coming to terms with which bowls are which. Um, Dawn's playing the multicolour ones, is she? Yeah, Dawn yeah. has the multicolours. Yep. A yeah. little bit difficult to tell at times mm. which one's which. They do have stickers on them that they don't show up quite as well on camera as they do on green. Just miss the line with that one. Chose mm. to play a couple of metres of weight, just... Get underneath that line. So Sarah holding one. Not a lot of room to count. Blokes like you and I, Tony, probably be happy with that. But I think Sarah's <laughs> going to have a pick a it up and walk away. And try, and, <laughs> try and draw another. 
And we've got a bit of renovations going on. We're back here at Club Dubbo in July for the State Junior 7 aside. Yeah, that's a great tournament. We love that uh, junior tournament. And juniors has always been a big part of our club. Um, with Glenn, and Glenn Morrison and John Rodas are big, big advocates for the junior, junior bowls. So are renovations planned to be completed at that stage? No. So the, the, following that? Yeah, the, the plan is to have it completed for September for the International Fours. Fantastic. So, yeah, Sarah's played one like you and I may have there. <laughs> very cautiously. She didn't want to disturb it. <laughs> very cautiously. So it ties things up, three apiece. I must say, I was a bit intimidated to come and do the... Uh, call this afternoon after listening to Claire a bit earlier. Claire did a magnificent job. She just happened to dob herself in. I went and asked her husband, Troy, would he like to join the commentary? And he was very shy and Claire said, well, I'll go and do it. <laughs> and then when I showed her where the door was, she was a little bit nervous. I said, just go and do 15 or 20 minutes. It'll be okay. And then she stayed on for the duration of the fixture. Yeah, no, she was very good. Well, Claire, a former New South Wales under-18 representative. Yes, yeah, she's still a very good bowler, actually, Andrew. She, she's um, been in a few finals so far at the club and I think probably only been with us for a couple of years now. Her and her husband, they're still living quite a few kilometres away, aren't they? Yeah, Coon and Barabran. So, um, yeah, about an hour and a half away. Um, her and Troy are down here most weekends. Good club members, good, both good bowlers. It's I great they've given up their time, isn't it? See Claire out here marking the game. We'll look out the window and Troy's down here as one of our umpires for this afternoon. So yeah. to make that commitment when you're an hour and a half or so away from them. Yeah, they're good, good people. Um, I think got Troy a, won a... Got a feeling reserve. if you check back, you'll find he won a state president's reserve yeah. singles, as it was called that time. Yeah. One only a few years ago. I yeah, I think it was only two or three years ago, yep. I think I was at the venue that day. I'm going to do a bit of a shout-out to Jordan Morrow as well. Jordan got through this morning, um, had to win by a number of shots to uh, progress, and good on him for getting through, and I wish him all the best. He hit, he hit the exact number, Tony. He had to beat his opponent, Shane O'Neill from Orilla, uh, letting Shane score no more than 20. And he beat him at 25 20. Uh -huh. So he hit the number uh -huh. right on to progress on margin by one shot in that section. I never took Jordan for an accountant either. I spent a little bit of time at Macquarie this morning, probably 45 minutes or so. I've been at about that time at all three venues this morning. And there was quite the crowd down there. They were playing on the bottom green where the deck is. Quite a number of Dubbo supporters, quite a number of Rilla supporters who were up here for the, a couple of Fours events and some good banner going back and forth mm. between the two. It was yeah, it was really good. Bit of a bit of pill for Snowy, though. He's uh, missed out on the pairs by a shot. It's Dawn, a oh, little yeah. touch, a little upset just to open it up for Sarah. Does hold two, but Sarah, much better visual look. Yeah, you're right. So Shane O'Neill that Jordan beat this morning. Missed out in the pairs earlier in the week by one shot in sectional play and he's backed that up with the same in the singles. He does have the fours to go tomorrow. So Their, their opponent did play an exceptional bowl on the last to create a four. Oh, and talking of good bowls, well, what uh, an effort yeah, by Sarah. Yeah, that was a good effort by Sarah. <clears throat> so we have teams of volunteers at our other two venues currently. Updating those scores, you see flowing through the bottom right-hand side of your screen, they are semi-final matches. We are half a session advanced over here at Club Dubbo. These ladies played three sectional matches yesterday in the semi-final this morning. And that was just a, a decision that the men's and women's state singles would be able to handle the three games without any issues would also give us the opportunity to stream both semis and finals Dawn just missing out with the last just catching the wrong side of the bowl just the one she retakes the lead 
also means, Andrew, as you know, that we've been able to now feature a semi-final match in both the men and the women, and we'll get to see both finals. So if you weren't with us about 45 minutes ago when our men's singles wrapped up, it was Mark Wheatley defeating Hayden Boykowski in semi-final one. Semi-final two, Jay Bruce got over the top of Ray Pierce. So Jay and Mark in our state men's singles final this afternoon. Exact time is still to be confirmed pending the result that we have here in our ladies final. I actually marked both Jay and um, Mark's one of each of sectional games yesterday. So um, yeah, look, looking forward to that final. They're both super guys. Um, both played really well in their in their sections, so um, yeah, it should be a really good match. Based on what you saw, can we put you on the spot for a tip? <laughs> you know what? I, I really like the way Mark won his game um, in the section. He played um, Jesse, just can't think of Morona. Jesse Morona from uh, Cabramatta, and um, played really, really well. Jesse played well as well. It was a good match, um, but. Uh, and then when watching Mark play Hayden there on the live stream, I was at home doing domestic duties. <laughs> and um, um, he played well in that, really well in that as well. So, you yeah, know, but gee, well, gee whiz, Jay played well against um, Jack uh, McShane too in the, in the game that uh, I marked for them. Absolutely. Hard to separate them, really. Very much so. We've got that on record that you're tipping Mark Wheatley from Wyong. Well, well I don't know whether I'm tipping. But later <laughs> in the day. I do, what about here? I, I do like his consistency. Oh, it's hard to go past Dawn in this one, isn't it? Yeah, we said at the start of the coverage, Dawn will be favourite. However, Sarah, a former winner of this event, current lead in the New South Wales State Ladies side, and it's bowls like that that have her in that position. I think Claire hit the nail on the head with Dawn earlier in the, in when she was on the stream. That Dawn just doesn't seem to get flustered. She's she's always calm, cool, and collected. Um, you don't see much emotion out of her. Balls all near the jack all the time. I wouldn't be flustered. Either. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's true too. But yeah, she just seems to you know if she does a poor bowl, then she which is very rare, but she doesn't seem to let it get to her. No, absolutely, very. Reserve personality Dawn doesn't say too much even when skipping insides. Just gets about her way of play. Oh, Sarah, Sarah's put another good one down here, she? Oh, a bit heavy. Just passing by. So Dawn with an opportunity here. Only one at the moment. That's what Dawn has just asked. Dawn's last ball right of screen is second shot. It's been called as a measure. Right. Try and draw the shot. She's just overweight, has a chance of touching the jack to her own two bowls, bottom right of screen. No, I think she'll get all the way back from there. Oh, you'd be surprised. It's the pace on this occasion. <laughs> yeah. What's the breeze doing? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Not a lot. We're probably at about 0 0.3 kilometres an hour. <laughs> yeah, at look, at the, the, on that river side of the green, it always tends to swoop a bit. So you can't, can't do what they refer to, the Greens down our way, where we play Lee. You can't refer to the mountains side here. No, there's no mountains. You can uh, refer to the... Or the beach side. The desert side. <laughs> oh, Sarah, a little bit of room here to count. These are the ones that you think about if you don't go on to win the game. Almost a meet up. Yeah, pretty expect much, to count here. Pretty much a free kick. Hmm. And it's a measure for... Just got to run a little further. There it is. That's into the count. So a minimum of two. Sarah Boddington. Let's just see another lead change. Talk to us about some of your team here at the club, Tony. Some of your senior staff and what they've been doing, obviously, those last couple of weeks, but in the six months lead up to this event. Oh, look, um, I've got to do a big shout-out to Timmy Farrell and, and Linton um, Wilkins, who were... Uh, Tim's our CEO. Um, pretty well known to anyone that's been in the bowling um, fraternity for any length of time. Tim's a, still a very good bowler. 
um, and Linton, we, Linton joined us from Burke about oh, 12 months ago. Um, they've both put in stellar efforts for the last um, few months leading into this and I think I did see Tim behind the bar there earlier so um, there's no job that he won't do no, I was which is good he, he might have been Wednesday afternoon at what some of the team did we had a host of people here in the club when we had a, a weather delay which meant our pairs games didn't get away as scheduled at some of the venues and I think you had your greenkeeper and one of your office staff out doing dishes in the restaurant to try and catch up. Well, both Tim, your CEO, pouring drinks behind the bar. <laughs> yeah. It was all hands on deck for whatever job was needed and everyone went in and did it with a smile and just got it done for the good of the club. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So uh, quite a few of the directors of the board um, uh, also, like if we do can bars outside or something like that, we'll, we'll staff those because um, you know we'll, we've gone and got RSAs and all that sort of stuff. So... Um, but yeah, the uh, the guys. Um, I think it was both green keepers in there doing dishes. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a bit of a family. This place. It's a the, we've worked very hard on the cultural aspects of the of the club and uh, and the staff. Um, yeah, do behave a bit like a family now. So it's great. Good to see. And back on screen. We it was Sarah claiming three on the previous end and holding shot here very good bowl small touch on the jack Dawn just not quite finding his forehand in this direction weight and line just mixing up it a bit at the moment Jed's drawing nicely on that side too oh, I must say the greens are in really good condition here this year now you had your challenges over the last two mm, years. Yeah. All sorts of weather events have occurred and not been kind to greenkeepers. No, nah, so. look, not at all. I think the worst thing was we had that really wet year and then we had a cool summer. Um, and anyone that knows anything about tip grass, it just doesn't grow when it doesn't get warm. Yeah, you need a warm night. Yeah, exactly. If your nights are consistently cool, you don't get that rejuvenating growth over the summer period mm. so this this summer that we've just gone through was more like a normal summer for us probably not quite as hot as it can get but um definitely the nights nights stayed warm which helped our green keepers dawn last bowl here one down shot bowl just past jack high just trying to sit the bowl or trail the jack and once again she's very close Anything but the gap now for Dawn. Yeah, great uh, shot. Gets it for two. And we're all locked up again. Six shots apiece. Terrific shot from Dawn Heyman. Penance is about to start for your... Open teams. Yeah, weekend after, weekend after this Easter. Sort of yeah. concludes. So we've got a big weekend at Easter too. We've got a tournament on Friday and a tournament on Saturday. Um, pairs, traditional pairs on Friday and uh, three bowl pairs on Saturday. The team will be well prepared for that after 16 <laughs> days of competition here. Yeah. We're giving him Thursday off, I know. He's Brownie, oh no, he can work. <laughs> so we finish here... Late Wednesday afternoon with our fours finals. Yeah, and then a day in between Thursday, and then you're into it for another into it for another two days. So we'll give him a day off on Sunday. Easter Sunday off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he's a good fella, Brownie. Going to give him a day to eat his Easter eggs, eh? Hey? Yeah, that's it. Well, he he probably doesn't need any of them. Oh. Don't want to really stretch things out here. Almost maximum length for about. Just over a metre from the tee at the mat end and all the way to the tee at the far end. Both ladies just pulling up short with their opener. Yeah, it'll probably take them a couple of bowls to adjust. Although I think Dawn's got a better weight on this one. Change sides of the rinks after Sarah's first. As you said, that late turn yep. there. 
Bring it all the way back. Maximum length here is, is fairly long too. Our greens are of the longer variety. 38 metres I think they are. Can get a little bit of getting used to as well, can't it? If you it's know, an advantage. Where you are. Yeah, it's actually an advantage. Our pennant sides, we encourage them to play full lengths. Sarah corrected well. Both ladies finding the weight on their forehand. Bowl number two. Dawn. I need to get down after this. Looks a slightly wider line to a previous. Will it touch the jack? Very close. Oh, it has, but not quite enough for shot. Oh, she has narrowed the room that Sarah now has to count and given herself two bowls at the back of the rink. I think here for Sarah, be trying to draw to Dawn's last one. Get third shot and a bowl just passed would be perfect. If you're a little bit longer than that, you cover the back. If you're a little bit shorter than that, you may be able to count. Mm. Well, it's just landed a little bit in a nowhere kind of area. Mm, it's probably given Dawn a cider, actually. So we saw a couple of ends ago in this direction. Dawn had a backhand runner with a last. Just watching her go back to the match. She was eyeing up that shot again. See whether she chooses that backhand runner or a bowl very similar to a previous. What are you thinking, Andrew? Where are you playing? Backhand runner. Then again, okay. I'd probably so Dawn, smack it into that and then so, take my own yeah, two out. So Dawn's heard you call the backhand shot and thought, well, if Andrew's saying that, I'm going to try it on the <laughs> forehand. No, look, Dawn is, Dawn is good enough to play that underneath trailer jack for three. Just, She's close. Just over oh, weight yeah, with just that over, line. Yeah. Good weight, but just not the line to match. She needs to pull another one out of a bag now and play the backhand runner. There was a chance, I guess, she could get Sarah's bowl and potentially remove her own two at the back. So went for the safer option and a shot she played very well with a third bowl. Yeah, I don't think the backhand shot needed big weight, though. Just enough, maybe just to ditch. <clears throat> enough to, to hang underneath the short bowl, looking for the jack to the ditch. Uh, this will be a careful draw here for Sarah. Trying to draw to the tee. That should be her aim. Finish on the tee. You're very close to counting. Got her own bowl to turn in as well. And she's close here. No, just put up short. Missed on the correct side though. Sarah, 7 6 now in front. Scores coming through. Dubbo's Jordan Morrow just in the lead there at the moment. Go, okay, Jordan. 12 10. You'll see a bit of a variation in these scores, folks at home, if you're watching on. Some venues are able to get semi final games underway a little quicker than others. Just dependent on when their round three matches finished this morning. So there will be some variations there. That's why some games look more advanced than others. And hopefully everyone that's in the area that's cheering on their players at the Sporties or Macquarie Club makes their way over here to Club Dubbo this afternoon for our men's singles final. Expecting a great crowd. Yeah, that should be a cracker of a game. Well, I know all the Jay Bruce fans will be here, Tony, to cheer him on after you've tipped against him. <laughs> yeah, dear. Good on you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, two or one to bottom? One to bottom? It was one, mate, one, yes. Yeah. Right, Dawn, as you said, last couple of ends in this direction, not quite nailed the forehead, made a small conversion last time down. Oh, she's heard you, mate. She's uh, mm. got it. Not quite what we'd expect from her at the moment, but... It's been in a routine so far, Dawn. As we said, started off last Saturday... Uh, eight days later, still going undefeated. Tricky thing for Dawn, maybe this is now the finishing line for her. This is the last match, and she mm. knows it is, regardless of the results. So just needs to keep that focus right up. She's got to have sore legs. <laughs> well, the benefit of the last couple of days of singles is she's been able to move her way through the rounds 
with some large victories and, yeah. and get off the league. So hopefully that's um, put her in good stead in that in that sense. There's draw shot that's number two. Probably, right probably just another day in the office for her, yeah, spending that much time on the green. Possibly. Well, yeah, and for someone like Dawn, who's now part of the Australian squad, these big multi-nation events, Commonwealth Games, World Championships, Asia-Pacifics, multi-nations, they're all... Heavy campaigns, lots of games for an extended period. So they train accordingly. And Sarah works oh, off good the shot. front for a touch-up. Might have made a couple. Bowls a very gentle sport, as we know. However, the Australian squads over the last two decades have really moved into a high-performance area and training accordingly. A lot of work done with the Institute of Sport in Canberra to get athletes like Dawn able to compete day after day at their best. And that's second shot for Dawn, maybe even third. And has blocked both sides of the ring. So you see the look at Sarah's face. Not quite sure which side to play. If that's me on the mat, I haven't made a decision yet. I'm coming down to have a look. Just to have a proper sense of the angles of these bowls. And she's gone for the back. Yeah, it was not a bad shot there. Tried to work her own bowl in. A couple of rolls. So Dawn... We know she's definitely got second shot. She owns the two bowls right at the centre line there as well. Maybe a nice arriving shot. I sit the bowl. She does hold third shot as well. She may play it quite firm. And it is she the sure is. shot. Oh, she's wide. She's missed the line, so Sarah doubles her lead. Now, now eight shots to six. And we're getting a close final like we expected. You see on in that shot in the background, the, the windows here at the club across that viewing area, Tony. Every chair basically taken along there. Yeah, there was a fair crowd in here when I just walked in 10 minutes ago, so I say it'll only get bigger by this afternoon. Yeah, more and more people arriving, rolling up for the fours. Action underway again tomorrow afternoon. Our final discipline to start. Our 1pm start at all three venues tomorrow afternoon for the fours. Just a reminder, tomorrow morning here on the Bowls New South Wales YouTube and Facebook channels will feature the Senior Men's Singles Final. Currently semi-finals underway. Robbie Warren from Taraji playing Gary Corey from Cabramatta. In the other semi-final, it's Greg Brims from Kempsey McClay RSL up against Warren Shipley from Soldiers Point. Shipper are lucky to get through after losing his first game. They, yeah, that particular section, Andrew, they all had one win overnight. And Warren able to get a win over Bernie Melville this morning. He had a good win over uh, Kevin Robinson yesterday afternoon. Uh, I saw about eight bowls of that clash. Kevin was holding a good two and Shippo had a big run. Wide as, clipped his own bowl, picked up the jack, ran into the ditch to get two to go out. Okay. <laughs> so I saw his lucky bowl. Certainly not much between these ladies at the moment on the draw. So they're just playing a good one at the right time to get an advantage. And Dawn looking for the jack. Well, I just wonder, Dawn's been dominant in every game she's played so far. Whether or not Sarah really taking the game to her could just put her off her, off her confidence a little bit. It's 
Sarah. So, yeah, covering these bowls behind. Holding oh. two, I think, was the indication from Claire Brown. Storm. <laughs> Just resetting herself, going onto the mat. Wasn't Breeze. quite comfortable with how yeah. the bowl was sitting in the hand. So. Breeze has just come up a little bit in the last uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. It's uh, coming from left to right as we look at the screen. Right, last one of Dawn's will be very close to shot. Yeah, I think Claire just indicated it was shot. Okay, thank you. Sarah, one down. Just outside the perfect line. Will it be enough to get shot? Not quite. Indication, as you said, Tony, to Dawn there is that she's holding one. So she's going to stick down this backhand side. Does have that bowl of Sarah's coming in, which she'll want to avoid. Hmm. Slightly cautious with that one. Gets a scoreboard going again. I mentioned earlier, Tony, there's not much in the body language from Dawn. Probably just see she's slightly frustrated. This hasn't quite matched line and weight as she has done throughout this competition. It's interesting, you know, I was talking to a couple of the bowlers uh, yesterday afternoon, Hayden, but Bukowski in particular and he was saying that um, he found that the wider hand or the riverside hand far easier to draw a decent shot than, than going down what, what we call the narrow side anyway um, and it's interesting that Dawn and, uh, tends to be playing that narrow hand well here she goes again um, more often than not it tends to be a little bit more unreliable Oh, no, that's not a bad shot. <laughs> yeah, I guess with someone like Dawn who can play really nice weight, she's never going to be far off down that narrower side. There we are just joining us. This is the Bowles New South Wales State Women's Singles Final. Dawn Hame and St John's Park up against Sarah Boddington from Foster. And we have another game to follow this, which will be our men's final. Jay Bruce from Malua Bay up against Mark Wheatley from Wyong. Plenty of bowls still to go here this afternoon in Dubbo. Yeah, they're two good bowls from Dawn there. I joked earlier in the week when we were on coverage, I think, Tony, that you should be trying to sign Dawn up. <laughs> Has there been any movement in that space over the last 72 hours or so? <laughs> I'm not sure we could get her to move to Dubbo. <laughs> even with the great attractions you've got out here? Well, even with, I mean, it'd be like trying you trying to talk her into going to Orange, eh? <laughs> At least our weather isn't quite as severe as yours. <laughs> Sarah just passed, so Dawn holding two. Well, we were at an event and I've got the, the tracky dax and the jumper on and in the house and Lee's come out wearing shorts and a singlet <laughs> so what, are you, what are you rugged up for it's beautiful it's about three degrees <laughs> yes I played in orange when it was just on the verge of sleep it's not very pleasant and that was some of the easiest days to win because no one else wanted to be there <laughs> yeah. I remember, actually that was a country club yeah holy crow it was uh, it was cold that day Dawn added another, so Sarah's found the line with both bowls. Just looking to correct on the weight, watching this one intently. Just needs to run a little further. It's just going to pull up, so still Dawn holding at least two. Third bowl close. Yeah, I like it for three, actually. Dawn may be forced into a change of hand here. We'll see how much she does like this forehand with this bowl. Oh, if, she's, if she's prepared to risk that bowl of Sarah's or touching the jack on the forehand, we know she's feeling really confident down this side. Well, I think safer she's play. holding three and going backhand. Yeah, safer play, definitely the backhand. Mm, just run into one of her own. 
I can see that head out the window and live on the green the view looks definitely three. This should be a pretty good line for that side. Just on down to a pace. What sort of target does she oh, leave yeah. here if she turns her own bowls? Uh, we think that's a definite counter. Yeah, we're going to call that. That last one is in. All three on the right-hand side of the jack are definitely in, and we believe the fourth one on the back is also counting. So vital, I think, for Sarah to get in there and mm. if not get shot, get second. Just so that Dawn doesn't get that lift. She has got a shot down that right-hand side. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is... You must guarantee you arrive with this bowl. Guarantee your pace. If you carry a metre or two through, you are a chance. Work your own bowl or trail the jack for two. The situation cannot be short with this one. If you trail it right through, well, so be it. Give it a chance. Angles can work in your favour. If you find the gap, well, that's just unlucky. Close. She's very close. Now Sarah Body in a bowl first now. Onto oh, the jack. Yeah, great shot. And that's two. Great shot. The only thing Dawn was worried about with her fourth one there was just turning her own bowls across to make that target. Mm. And that proved to be the difference with Sarah just making contact with the shot bowl before getting the jack. First one to double figures. We mentioned your pennant competition starting, Tony. Where have you been picked for the club? I don't know. We haven't actually seen the sides yet. <laughs> I think they I think they're posting this afternoon. No, I wonder why the crowd was here. <laughs> yeah. What grades have you got this season? Uh, two, four, uh, six, and seven. So, yeah. I've been playing fours personally, but yeah. Oh, another burglar in the fours. Well, <laughs> if, you, if you have a good win, you might get to play against one of my two colleagues who are also playing fours, Andrew in zone 16 at the moment, Ben in zone 7. Okay. Sarah gets off to a good start. Yeah, oh, yeah, ball. nice ball. I think Sarah's going to play higher than the fours. Yeah, we're, we're very hopeful about our top grade this year. We've got some... We've had some good pickups in in players in recent times, and um, they should have a really good side. And just under. So Botto down here, trying to replicate it first. So a pretty good job of it. So just get yeah. past now. Oh, a little unfortunate to pop it out, but very good bowl, much the same. Dawn just looking for a bit of turn. It'll be second. Really yeah. Shot. Found a range here this end. Sarah Boddington, three oh, wow. almost Good shot. perfect bowls. It's another touch on the jack. There's a shot there for Dawn, though, if she can crack the egg there. He's going to turn it over. Going nice oh, and no, firm. She's going big. She's really trying to crack the egg. <laughs> she <just> scrambled it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Jack into the ditch. Camera's just about to go back. You'll see... The jack has stayed in the rink. Clara put the marker up for us. Dawn's toucher went far over and left a screen. It has just gone out of bounds. So the three bowls you see on screen are the only three still in the game. I don't know, there may be a toucher. No, there is one in oh, the ditch. there is a toucher down there? Yeah, okay. I think it might be one of Dawn's. So 
be able to get a view from side on down there. No, apparently not. <laughs> no, it's uh, not responding at the moment. I'm trying to do a reboot. Okay, so here's pulled up there. Now, look at the bowls down there. No, no, she's pulled that one out too. There. I thought we'd seen what had happened there, so... I think the indication, Dawn is holding one. A really good drive. Maybe what she needed. Yeah. Especially if she can back it up here and draw this one. She's got plenty of room. Uh, just got to pull up here now. She's past the front. Just got to stop. Uh, that's It'll stop. Well played. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. Well, <laughs> draw that well, she almost got a touch her. <laughs> she's dead drawn it. <laughs> Uh, Probably played that a little too well for comfort. Yeah. You have three metres to draw to three the Three metres to draw it. She's put it within six inches. Yeah. <laughs> That's why she's playing for Australia and the three of us aren't. <laughs> well, probably one of the reasons. <laughs> no, there's a few others, I'd say. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it's definitely me. See some of those scores going through. Bottom of the screen. Just a reminder, their semi-final games. In the various events. Looking forward to seeing that game. If I was at City Men's Senior Semi-Final. Gary Corey from Cabramatta. Robbie Warren from Taraji. Should be an absolute cracker. The green's running quite quickly over there. At the Sporties Club. Both players were drawing really good shots when I was over there this morning. Both undefeated to this point. Three wins out of three. I haven't seen Dawn shorten the length up. So that's been a go-to just to extend the jack towards the back of the rink. Do you have a set plan when you play Tony? Do you have a favoured sort of way? Um, probably favour. Um, if I'm not bowling well, I like to go short. Yeah. Get the games over quicker. Get a bit of confidence. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> Seriously, in a touch on clear. Plus, it's less up. to walk, man. <laughs> One looks a bit of line here with this one. Will it run nice. all the way? It's a little short. Ooh. As you can see by that, I managed to resurrect the middle camera. Just needed to... Pull the plug out and put it back in again. <laughs> give it a hard reboot. <laughs> hey Mark, I've just been... Asked to see his shot, and it is Dawn's last bowl that is favoured by a marker. You see the, the closed fist pointing downwards with the arm out, saying, you're down. The simple question was, am I up or am I down? Very good response. Oh, yeah, Claire's all over it. Oh, what a shame there from Sierra. Lovely speed. Oh, OK. Just touches the front. Dawn with a holding shot, trying to draw up with a tee. A little touch here is the perfect result. Grimace on release. I've seen a moment what that means. She thinks she may be just outside. Well, you know you're feeling it when that's a grimace out of the hand when you leave it there. <laughs> that's going to count. That's two shots. Maybe she didn't want to leave it off to the side like that. Who knows? I know I'd be reasonably happy with that one, Lee. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> much the same here for Sarah. Like a few ends ago, just give it a chance. There's plenty of things that can work in your favour if you arrive. Mm, just just got a grass wrong, then. Okay. Dawn will take the chance here. Get down on the forehand. You can see her lining up that way. Try and just close this off. Well, she's put that on a wider line. Didn't quite time that release perfectly. It's coming, though. Yeah, it's just going to set up that shelf, though, which I think she wanted to avoid. 
does count. Mm-hmm. Which you could just see from the way she let, as soon as she let it go, she wanted to just cover that off. So Sarah can trail the jack here for another two or three. Nothing really to lose by arriving. She won't be able to give any more away. It's her own bowl coming in. And she's just under the jack. Just wider the jack. She can sit on Dawn's bowls. Potentially fall in for shot. Once again, underplaying is the crime here. You can overplay it. A couple of metres extra. Can't do any harm. <laughs> No down here will hold a pretty good line. Yeah, any contact on those two bowls of Dawn and she's um, Dawn's and she's going to shoot across onto the jack anyway. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, she just she outside. Maybe a little bit yeah, wide. She's waving her hand. She knows she's just put it outside the perfect line. She wants to flop back oh. in around. Is she going to fall back over? Well, that's... Quick, chuck it. <laughs> See what the result is, whether that's second or third shot. I think it is second. Yeah, one's a call. So fortunate result mm. from Sarah. Gets us back level 10 apiece. Just goes to show if she had to hit the top of that head bowl, she would have been probably right on the kitty. Just a reminder, now I can share... To like and share any post or stream from Bowls New South Wales State Championships here at Club Dubbo as that jack's rolled into the ditch. You like and share any of our posts or streams to win your share of prizes worth over $5,000 in partnership with Sharp EIT Solutions. Some great prizes there. There's a 70 inch smart TV, 40 inch touchscreen, some state of the art printers, microwaves. Yeah, all, all courtesy really of our partners at Sharp. So, as you mentioned, Andrew, Dawn trying to go for a really long jack. Just went over the lip and into the ditch. So, this is Sarah's jack length. Well, Dawn's disappointed in that bowl from a reaction. I'd be doing cartwheels while I'm that close. <laughs> it's dead weight. Well, I wouldn't be because. <laughs> so, wouldn't that be something? Well, to yeah, say? yeah. Green keepers get upset if I do anything but walk gently. <laughs> we might get you out on the coverage, right? That's what we're going to uh, be in store for. <laughs> mental cartwheels, mate. Mental cartwheels. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about the staff here earlier, and I was just thinking. Um, I, w I want to do a shout out to Anna in the kitchen as well, our head chef. They've done a wonderful job this week as well. So she's been a tad busy. Yeah, she has. She sure has. She's a great girl and she's doing a really good job. She's made about seven million toasted sandwiches, hasn't she? Quite a lot of toasted sandwiches, more than which probably she's made in the last two years. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I've got to say the buffets that they do for lunch, that Anna prepares for lunch, are just something else. They're they're special. Yeah, a nice Sunday roast earlier today. Oh, you had the roast? Yeah, okay. Very nice. Yeah, just about every time you wander around the corner there, there's lineups for the cafe. Yeah. Plenty of coffees, plenty of snacks, sandwiches and things like that being made. Right. This is close here for shot. Dawn's just questioning our marker, so... Yeah, the indication was that Dawn's holding one. So we see that now. So Dawn just to the left of screen with her two bowls. This one doesn't look quite up. No. Once again, a chance for Sarah. She's going to be forced onto the other side of the green here, I feel. Mm, I thought she was six inches or so short of the, length, uh, the width then as well. Yes. Okay, Sarah's going to remain down there. Try to turn her own up. Just needs to avoid contact on Dawn's last. Just to hold a long way. And grabs that bowl. Very 
Interesting to get some feedback from the players. I know in years gone by, the hand that Dawn's playing now, a lot wider, but it had been a bit slower. Yeah, this is on the right line. Just all down to a weight now. Well, if the other one shot, that also counts. Mm. Those two bowls almost equal in distance from the jack. One and a measure, she's saying. Yeah, I felt it was just that little bit shorter than the other one, not quite at jack high. Does for Sarah to change her hand. She's got a good chance here. Sit a bowl or just a little toucher could make three. He's probably just been caught a few times down here, just overdoing the line. Oh, not arriving either. No. Could be in for another lead change. Call by a marker. Clearly had shot the dawn with that other bowl and then drew alongside it for another. Oh, with that, Dawny takes the lead. I'm going to keep this jack on. Right down to the tee. 12 10, it's first to 25 in this state singles final. Still one more match to go this afternoon. Should be our men's singles final. Jay Bruce, Malua Bay, up against Mark Wheatley from Wyong. Both men recording good wins in this morning's semi finals. Mark Wheatley was on our featured match. Uh, winner over Hayden Boykowski from East Mail in 25-15. And next door it was Jay Bruce, 25-18 winner over Taran Points, Ray Pierce. Well, it's probably fair to say that the, the slight underdog in both of those matches has got up. Mm. Yeah, I think that's fair. Hayden, it. probably a, a favourite based on a very strong performance in the mixed pairs and a couple of uh, very strong performances in the Dubbo, City of Dubbo International Fours over the last couple of years on these greens. Yes, Hayden's been a, a, a great supporter of that event, but also has won it twice. So. <laughs> he hasn't lost a game here in that event over two consecutive years uh, with that strong field. Yeah, with Lee and... Um, Oh, a young fellow from Tasmania, I yeah, can't think Josh of his name. Walker Davis. Just Josh, yep. Yeah. Jake Rin and Lee Schrainer, part of that four. So no doubt Tony, they'll be back here in September. Yes, I think the hat -trick. Hayden's already uh, indicated that they're, um, they're keen to come back. Dawny holding there. Really good draw shot with her second. Well, if you've won it before and you get the chance for part of that 125,000, you're going to go back again. Yeah, and, and while we're while we're talking about it, yeah, but if there's bowlers out there that are keen to try the try their uh, hand against some of the best in the world, um, give Anthony a call. Bowls at clubdubbo.com.au. And honestly, why wouldn't you come to Dubbo? It's full of experiences, the Dubbo region. You can safari your way around the world at Taronga Western Plains Zoo or get a hands-on with an Aussie icon at the Royal Flying Doctor Visitor Experience. Get behind bars at the Old Dubbo Jail and experience 19th century prison life or head underground at the Wellington Caves. There's so much more to explore from an observatory to an arboretum. A historic homestead, intriguing art gallery. You can delight in authentic Japanese gardens or stand in awe of an enormous inland lake. The excitement doesn't stop there. Check out dubberegion.com.au to discover more. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. So we've seen Sarah. Pretty good draw shot with the last. Guaranteed herself second shot. However, 
You mentioned, Tony, those bowls very hard to pick between, but Dawn, the one jack high and the two directly mm. behind the jack. I think you're right, Lee, when you indicated there that she's got a chance for four here. Yeah, small toucher on the back end. Brings all of hers into the count. Well, she's got the right grass, if that's any well, help. Maybe just underneath, if anything. Yeah. Does she sit on Sarah's last? Oh. Not quite. Don't go to chance. So, let's be careful here, Sarah. Doesn't want to try and sit Dawn's ball on the forehand and get the inside of the jack. Hmm. Just over draw weight here, only from Sarah. Turn her own up to Jack or just underneath to the shot bowl. Don't think there's any risk of Dawny's coach putting her in jail for uh, <laughs> not playing well enough, like we saw with uh, Alan Starrett's joke with the two guys in the multi disability. <laughs> it was a great photo of them behind bars. <laughs> Drove past the old Dubbo jail this morning. Moving between venues, quite a crowd in the middle of town actually, the markets here and down the main street. So Sarah, as we said, trying to work her own bowls in down here. Well, she might be just a bit wide, I think. Yeah, just a little. Dawn Heyman gets to the dreaded 13. As across the halfway mark, we see Dubbo's Jordan Morrow trailing now 12 shots to 20. Mm. This is opponent from Cabramatta. Our state match committee chairman Warren Shipley, 15 12. The senior men's against Greg Brims. Maylene Reynolds from NBC, the coordinator NBC Sports. She's in front at the moment. We're off to NBC Sports in May and June for our senior and open inner zone size championships. Plenty of familiar names on screen. Wendy Clark from Ballina. She had the morning off courtesy of a withdrawal. She's 14-10 in front in her match. The senior women's. There we are. Cheering on any of those players. You'll see those scores continue to be updated on screen throughout the course of this match. Mm, we also have to. another men's final to follow. So we are off screen here with this ladies final prior to any of those semi-finals uh, prior to their finish. You'll be able to tune in for our men's final and get those scores. We'll go on to the results portal on Bowls Link. You can see any final scores from any event throughout all of our state championship campaign over the last two weeks. And that address is results.bowlslink.com.au Or if you can't remember that, jump on bowlsnsw.com.au Point your mouse at events and select Bowls Link results from the drop-down or go to the state championships page and check out all the information as dawn changes sides of the green yep. and draws a lovely shot in behind yeah good shot she, I, th I, I think she's been a bit out of sorts on that other the narrow side she has corrected really well when she has turned over to yeah. the wider side too hasn't she yeah plenty of players arriving to see one of our state champions from earlier in the event, our men's triple skip, Jack McShane from Marylands. And alongside him, Heath Lewis, also part of that winning rink in the triples. So they're going to look for a, a second title during this event. And Falls gets underway tomorrow afternoon. Dawn, she switched just to over keep again. us confused, it's gone back <laughs> to the back end, so a good line here, yeah. just needs to be the right weight. This pass, going to be close to a second. Yeah. Sarah, not asking the question, just looking to draw past her own. Alongside. Dawn's just checking that second now. Yeah. Yeah, be much the same for Dawn. Just trying to beat a last ball on the back end. She might be risking this forehand side of the green. So it'll be the right hand side just around the wall of bowls. 
Half a metre or so less than a last would be perfect. And now, Lady Singles winner from last year is in action tomorrow also. So that was Jessie Cattell from Cabramatta. She lines up in fours competition. She's still the reigning women's singles title holder for the next 45 minutes or an hour as the shot ball just fell down there. Dawn just trying to beat a last. Not quite the weight with this one, so... She probably had the best line of all of them there. <laughs> just didn't have the weight on it. Just pulling up short with her three. So see where she elects to play now. Well, the big fella's going to have a roll up. You yeah, see that out the window here. Ben Crick's delightus on screen. Unfortunately, we haven't got a second set of cameras to be able to bring in <laughs> Benny Tucci's having a roll up. We'd be using the wide angle with that one too. <laughs> Sarah, got a pretty good line here. This is Jack Eyes a chance. I'll be just over that though. Yeah. Uh, one or two to Dawn. Andrew, to look back through our scorecard, it was Sarah, I think, 10-8 at one stage. And the last few ends have gone in favour of Dawn. We'll see if it's 14 or 15. Uh, I think that's two, and it yep. is. Two conceded. 15-10. So the last uh, last half a dozen ends have been uh, in backwards order. 2-1-2-1-2. Two, one, two, one, two. So Dawn with eight shots over the last five ends has turned a 7-10 deficit into a 15-10 lead. Um, also, or, or in uh, reverse order, they're both the same. 2-1-2-1-2. Two, one, two, and two. <laughs> There's a name for that. Palindrome. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just on a little run here at the moment, Dawn. Sarah needs to be careful that this doesn't get away too far. If you're with us early in the day, she did have a comeback in her semi final. She trailed West Tamworth Cheryl Lee Stewart for a long time. Got some ends together herself to get over the line from 20 shots to 15 down to win 25 20. And you really don't want to invite Dawn to get on a big roll because. She will take advantage. This is Dawn's 21st match of this season's state championships. And she's 20 wins out of 20 matches played so far. That's a phenomenal effort, really, isn't it? Absolutely. And it took a legend of our game to stop her being in the fours. Yeah, that side from the Lansdowne district that defeated Dawn back in local competition. That'll be a formidable team tomorrow, skipped by Karen Murphy. With well, Ellen Fife, Jamie Lee Warsnop and Jessie Cattell, three of those ladies part of the team that won that Fours State Championship last year. Ellen Faulkner, of course, moving up to <laughs> Queensland and they've replaced her with a lady that's come down from Queensland in Jessie Cattell. So you've got two current Jackaroos. The, uh, well, the reigning state women's singles champion for another few minutes anyway. And the person who has played the most, made the most caps for Australia in any sport. Dual world champion. <laughs> well, Multiple you, medalist. Probably, probably quicker to name what she hasn't won than yeah. what she has. <laughs> Plate winner at the Dubbo City of the National Force. I was going to say, she hasn't Force. won the Dubbo International Force because <laughs> I know who plate. one of her teammates, teammates was. Well, she, she carried Gary Willis in that, didn't she? Or did no, she no, she, Gary? we beat Gary Willis. She carried, she she did better than that. She carried me and Tim Timmy Farrell. Uh, Sarah, well, just, there we go. <laughs> counting. Yeah, well. She's a very strong was. lady. <laughs> Your form must have been pretty good too, Tony. No, not really, no. 
That was a, you did actually play against Gary last year, didn't you? In the, mm, we beat him the in finals. the final, yeah. The uh, year before. Big grudge match? Yeah, there was uh, Gary and uh, Dave Inglis and uh, Chris uh, Wallace and um, Ian. Uh, sorry, not Ian. Uh, Neil Dalrymple. Okay, so Dawn, one down here. Once again, has a chance to touch the jack to bring all of her bowls into the count. She's coming, coming closer closely. to draw the shot. Oh, Does she yeah, get the jack, shot. though? Uh, not quite to bring the others in. Just a small touch-up. So Sierra has to be careful once again. Mm. Seems to be the pattern of how things are going. We said Dawn's won the last few ends. Sierra's tough. last bowl just hasn't had much on to play to here. Yeah, tough to see a, a shot that, we're, that hasn't got any risk in it here for Sarah. She's yeah, this is drawing the shot only. Mm. Yeah. What would you be doing here, Lee? Now, this is a forehand draw. She tries to play weight to chip that bowl out and gets her own. She's three down. That's probably what I would do, be heavy and chip my own ball out. <laughs> I'd be trying to draw, but... <laughs> well, she's taking an aggressive line. That's a pretty good line with the breeze just against. Been caught there a bit wide in the past. Oh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, good shot. Played it well. Just missed. Played the right shot. And Dawn... Keeps that 2-1 streak going. 2-1, 2-1, 2-1. The last six ends. And for those intrigued by our colleague Ben Crixtolitis and that roll-up, I can let you know he's played three bowls. The first one is five metres short. The second one is two and a half metres long. So he decided to get off his backhand and go to the forehand and was two and a half metres short with his third. Consistent. He, he's rolling up against Jason, one of our other commentators, <laughs> the male model from McLean, Jason Pinnock, who's currently holding two shots with bowls that are two metres away at least. Yes. As we look behind us, Tony, your uh, CEO, Tim Farrell, uh, doing a glass run uh, at the uh, moment. Out there picking up glasses. Good on you, Timmy. Uh, Dawny applying the pressure here. This is the time of the game. If Sarah Boddington's going to win... She needs to break this run over the next couple of ends. And think about a change of tactics. Gonna get this jack away from the T area. Dawn's found a range now. Well I gotta say, Lee, if that's the standard of fours that, <laughs> that they're, they're rolling up with um Mm, I think I think Club Dobo might have them covered. <laughs> yeah, Tony's referencing the end we can see on the neighbouring green between Jason and Ben. I think we might go and have a game for cash with them <laughs> later on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe that's what they're hoping for. <laughs> oh, me too. Ducks and drakes. <laughs> Dawn Heyman. What oh, a great what a shot. shot. Yeah, great shot, Dawn. Fantastic. What a great example of favouring the hand that you've been on. Mm. And sticking with it, that bowl of Sarah Boddington's to the side, that is a matter of nine inches, I would say, short of Jack High. And she's chosen just to draw around it to make sure. I guess even with that one, shot was a great result. Probably wasn't necessarily needing it. Had a chance to change some angles up for her next bowl, but drawing the shot, what a, what a great effort. Oh, Sarah's just missed with that one. I can, I can see the head the boys are having on the uh, other green. Um, they're lucky they're not playing into Dawn or they drop a six every end. I know she's only got four bowls, but he'd give a six for the distance away they are. And Dawny, forehand, back down here to the jackal pass. And she's accomplished that. She's yeah, always covered. Sarah's last. She's gonna, Sarah's trying to play her own bowl forward. You played the right weight last time, Sarah. Stick with that. Make contact at the front. If you don't get shot with this one, make your next one a little easier. Yeah, same weight. Get your own. You can get it onto the shot bowl. She's closer here. Needs to run. 
Just doesn't no, want to get Dawn's other. No, she's underneath that line. She's dropped a little bit of weight. Mm. She just had another half a yard or so. Might have had more chance. Well, it allows Dawn to play with a lot of confidence. Her third bowl finishing behind. She can just lose a small amount of weight on that. Trail <coughs> it back. Yeah, well, she could afford... Turn her own bowl up. Trail the jack. She could afford to be half a bowl narrow as well. Absolutely. Just tuck the kitty. That, that would be the perfect bowl, wouldn't it? Well, it, also, if she just finishes in between Sarah's bowl and the jack, mm -hmm. counts and really cuts off the, the promote your own. She is playing forehand. Right, Dawn Heyman. Chance to touch this jack. Does it run all the way up now? Mm, Past her does. own would be ideal. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just that do the job. And change some angles there. So we won't get an indication because Sarah's already at the head. Looking on screen. Used to be at least two to Dawn Heyman. Would you be tempted to go pretty big and try and get the split there? Absolutely. Get the split all three bowls. Depends the bowl in your hand, whether that runs through the jack or goes past it. You're a little on the wide side. You come off your own to the shot bowl. Maybe kills the end. You could slither across and get the jack to the back left-hand corner of the green as well. It should be really firm. Nice positive shot. Aggressive. Yeah. Quite a heavy shot is the call from here. Not sure she's listening. Right, we'll see what Sarah decides. Very good chance up off her own bowl. Less of weight than I may have expected. What contact does she get at the front? She's going to sliver through. Yeah, that was the tough oh dear. part there, that weight. So we see it's at least two. Yeah, I think Sarah tends to to uh, gravitate towards the less weight in her uh, weighted shots. I'm not sure she goes the up. big, flat-out aggressive one. It's two, but a lie detector's on. Oh, I think that was a two. Yep. Two it is. Claire has two yellow paddle pops. Oh, no, Dawny's not happy. She's going to chuck the measure on as well, and she says, yeah, it, it's two. That's another end consecutive for Dawny. <laughs> and the pattern continues. 2-1, two, 2-1, one, two, one, two, one, 2 Ten. Let's see, Dawn put the jack a little bit shorter on this occasion. Uh, is this a chance for Sarah to try and hone in on a draw game? Yep, uh, I think we will be doing a presentation between this game and the other one, just in case the. The girls are planning to get away. I'm sure the nice shiny cups are on the table out there ready to go with the medals. Lee's just going to make sure they're well polished. <laughs> A little bit A little bit astray with the opening bowls. Dorney has the best one. Oh, 
Uh, Sarah looking for a little correction on line on her opening bowl. She's done pretty well. Just going to run in for shot. Yep. Yeah, Sarah really needs to break this um, run of ends that Dawn's got at the moment. She needs to get the mat back, get a bit of confidence. Well, I think it's about 10 unanswered shots now. It's in fact 12. Uh, it's gone from 10-6 to 18-10. Seven required by Dawn, whereas 15 by Sarah. She really don't want to let that lead get any bigger, and it's still one to Dawn, according to our marker, Claire. Is that one at the back? I thought Sarah had... Oh, yeah, I'm a bit surprised by that one. Right. Well, it actually probably was just the question, is it one or two? Oh, uh, yeah. And Claire's just indicated to... Yeah, it was one. ...to Dawn, it was one to Sarah. Communicated with the players very effectively, <laughs> but... <laughs> We didn't hear the question because we were a little bit away from the green. Yeah, I think Sarah's definitely holding shot there. Chance to make three. Yeah, here. actually, Just she's got a chance to make four if she can sit that front bowl of Dawn's out. Well, I actually wouldn't be going for the front bowl as a sit because I'd be frightened of pushing it towards the jack. Mm. I'd be just looking for a confident draw up and through my own. Dawny hasn't got any bullets left, so roll your own onto the jack. Yep. I don't think Sarah thinks quite that way. She'd be just draw. She gets in turn her own over. or well, she's turned it through. Or oh, it has flopped in. But I think it's just gone a little too far on the run. Mm. I think it will be just the one. But importantly, it's one yep. back for Sarah Boddington. So it does end that winning streak. For Dorney, who won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven consecutive ends. And Sarah's just brought the mat. A little further up the green than it has been over the last few ends. Throwing a slightly shorter length. Good start by Sarah. She's put that one 12 inches or so behind the kitty. He could see a fingerprint on the cup, so he's just looking for the uh, the polish. <laughs> uh, look at this. Great shot, Dawn. Good answer. So for Dawn, she doesn't want to let Sarah any sniff of getting back into this game. Really wants to just say, well, I'm the boss. I'm going to beat you at your length. Just see on the scores there that Jordo, unfortunately, was defeated. Um but well done to Jordan for making the semi-finals of the uh, state playoffs in the reserves. Well, and uh, good luck to... I just missed the name of the guy he was playing, but good luck to him. It'll come around again before too long. Uh, I think it's, it's Steve Smith from Steve Cabramatta. Smith. Mm -hmm. Apologies if it's not Steve. Well, well played him. Great bowl from Dawn. Yep. I think it was just one up to one up. Is it a better one? That's a good question. Well, Sarah just needs to... Mm. 
Make a little contact on this. Whatever hand she has played, she can stick with that. And she's playing the, the narrower hand. She's playing the same hand that Dawn has previously. She's going to mm. switch it over. She's going to go, yeah. I don't think she really needed to, but she has more, well, she has the chance of the jack clean on that hand and can come off Dawn's bowl. On the other hand, though, you get a little bit of contact that springs Ooh, to she's yours. she's in there close. Oh, oh what, what do I know? <laughs> what a shot. <laughs> what would I know? <laughs> Never underestimate how they can make a fool of you, mate. <laughs> oh, look, there, there's always... There, there is no wrong shot. It's the shot that you see best. Yeah. Oh, Dawn's going big here. Oh. Well, that's not a bad result, though. She's got rid of one of Sarah's bowls. I think she's still just one down. Don't think she can afford to be... That aggressive or the heavy weighted shot again. Sarah. I don't think we'll see a heavy weighted shot here from Sarah. She'll go towards the back. I don't think she'll even try and get anywhere near this head. She just wants to say to Dawn, well, you can have a crack at this if you want, but if the jack springs out, you're dropping a three. Hmm. I just wonder whether Dawn would be better off to take the medicine here and drop a one. Obviously, she's a better player than me and <laughs> might just go for this. Can just just over the draw, try and just get a little contact on... Oh, she's no, going to go whack. Big weight. Oh, look at oh that. well, what would I know? <laughs> that's a couple. Yeah, that's a couple of shots to Dawn. Well played. Super shot. Big heavy weight running into the head. I don't think the jack moved at all, did it? It didn't. Probably would wasn't quite as uh, tight as we thought. Well, Dawny up to 20. And she's gone back to the full length. Oh, I'm not surprised. That's what she had the big run on. So smooth in the delivery. Stays down just after delivery and follows through brilliantly. It's a decent opening. It's just left. Mm. Oh, not quite a metre or so short. Or well, maybe it is a metre. Sarah. Oh, she's still going to stick with the side she's been playing. She's... Was playing the other side of the green earlier. Obviously feels that there is an advantage to chasing down the same side as Dawn. It's a pretty good reply, just Very under good. the jack. Very nice. Dawn obviously felt that that first ball of hers was in her eyes. Switch sides. Just left that one about a half a metre short. And 
Sarah's done the same. She's switched sides as well, but unfortunately she's left that one well short. Chance for Dawn to just take the advantage back. This He's given it every chance. Yeah, this one's got better weight. Oh, she's just got an oh. edge of it and pushed it towards Sarah's bowl. Well, I think Sarah desperately needs another bowl in there. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of room. But if she doesn't get this one into the counting range, she opens the chance for Dawn to uh, play with a little bit of weight and rip out that bowl. She's done just that. Mm. Might be in the road for the shot, but I think Dawn... Well, they're a long way away, but she can take that bowl out for three. Yeah, well, that's right. And then scoreboard pressure may just take its toll. The good news for Sarah is that that bowl that she's left short then is... She sort may, of in the eye. Yeah, she may come across the grain, though. Well, a chance to play forehand underneath the mm. short bowl near the centre line. Or we'll go wide around it. Right. Well, swinging weight, not huge. You want to just make sure you're clear of that one. She, she's close. Got the kitty, I think. Grab the weight. That'll do for two. Yeah, good shot. Fantastic bowl from Dawn Heyman. Makes a two. Pressure on to Sarah Boddington. Two down. Nine behind on the scoreboard. It's a bit tough to get at, too. <laughs> there may be a path through those two. But don't want to shank it and get your own. It would be, would be a terrible effort to get your own, but... <laughs> If you collect one of the shorter bowls, anything can happen. That's the thing. If you try and play backhand underneath the short bowl, Sarah lining it up. She's going big weight. She's got oh. nothing. Yeah, it was going to be a tough shot. It was a hard one to get at. It's just a bit more of a march of Dawn towards a title. And Claire holds up two indicators. Dawn moves to 22. The Richie Benno score. <laughs> Dawny, Matt back. Is it right on the tee? It's pretty close to it. Mm. Oh, no, it's just up a metre and a half or so. Yeah. Jack, not quite full length. Oh, gosh, it's only six or eight inches off the back of the tee. That's a, good a starter. decent starter, yes. Even better as it's flopped down right on the centre line. Mm. I don't think that'll bother Sarah, but it does make it that little bit harder to visualise your shot sometimes if you can't quite see the jack cleanly. Or is that just mugs like me? <laughs> well, Sarah, third on the heavy side. Sometimes it's what the short bowl... Can do for Dorney. She'll just load this head up in the uh, peg out zone. I think the important thing when you get to that 21 22 is not to think, right, I can win this end, mm -hmm. especially not with your first two bowls. <coughs> 
Your first two bowls, you have to play it like you're going to win the end. I'm going to get one close. And then maybe with your third or fourth, you look at, OK, what, what's available to me? You start thinking, oh, I'll get a three with this bowl. When you only got two bowling your second one, you're uh, setting yourself up to not concentrate on what you've got to do. Just needs to find a metre or so here on that last one. Not sure no, I think she's, no, she's uh, shorter again. Yep. Well, for Sarah, lose a metre, draw a shot. I think the front one's still holding the shot, though. Yeah. I think it is one to dawn at this stage. Sarah really needs another one in there. This one looks heavy as well, is it? Just going to slide. Oh, no. Oh, it's, it's heavy, but it's not too heavy. It's no, that's shot. probably the shot, yep. Good thing for Dawn. It's past the jack. She can draw with confidence to it. Mm. Probably would have preferred her third bowl not to be where it is. <laughs> If you're a little bit narrow, you turn your own once, but you've got your own bowl in the path, so pretty much draw to beat that last bowl. Backhand draw. Stick with the hand you've played. Better wait this time. Well, that could be a real battery flattener for yep. Sarah. Yeah, great shot. Fantastic. Well, they say singles can be a lonely game, and right now Sarah would be thinking, what have I got to do? Mm-hmm. You've got to beat that ball. No path to the jack. Can't really think about going big and looking for the ball or the jack. I don't know if this one will come back mm. quickly enough on that line. I think it's heavy too, isn't it? Yeah, just going to run through, so it's Dawny edges closer. Resume transmission on the length of end. <laughs> Two to get. Well, I don't think Sarah Bodden can, can afford to lose another end, actually. No, I think uh, it's time for her to um, really take stock and make sure that she uh, puts herself back in the contest. I'll, I'll never declare a winner at this stage. But I just can't see her getting back in this game for that deficit. Didn't you just declare a winner? <laughs> oh, long odds now. Not, long odds, OK. I'll, not, I'll wear that. We're not, we're not calling correct weight on the race yet. <laughs> She's pretty relentless, Dawn. She just keeps going in, putting the bowls in the right spots. I have I have seen people overcome at bigger odds. Uh, trailed a singles game thirty to twenty one day and got home. 
I tried one twenty eight four and got home. I think Sarah's holding the shot here at the moment. Well, she is definitely. Claire's just put a paddle up. Mind you, I wasn't playing anyone near the class of Dawn Heyman. No, in, no insult <laughs> to those two unfortunate people. Well, Dawny, oh, I think that's good enough. Yep, yep. one yellow. Well, I think she might only have the yellow paddle. Oh, this has got a little bit of promise. I think she's got the kitty, has she? She's got the jack. Clean as. Mm. Good bowl from Sarah. Watch that one coming in as Dawny returns to the mat. Oh, when you're down, not quite game, but facing it, that's... Pretty good reply. Dawn has a couple of shots here she can play. Either hand. Confident. Gets a little tickle on that jack. She'll make two. For game. Sits the bowl. She can even get two. Or go big. Oops. She's got one of her own. She's still holding one. You would normally back Sarah to draw that inside. Dawn's got first and third, so there's no no real running shot there. Oh, Claire's called it one and a measure. Don't want it to be going because I just clicked the wrong button on the... <laughs> don't want to miss the, the match-winning shot. Oh, I think this is pretty well pointed. Doesn't want to hit bowl on the way in. She has. Oh, uh, I think that might be... I think that's two, isn't it? Game, set and match. Well, out the window, it is definitely two. Mm -hmm. And a disappointing way for Sarah to, to go out... Oh, maybe it's not definitely two. No, they're going to measure it, but it looks... Maybe that was the shot dial already, and I just got the wrong call. Do we have another end? Nope. No. Not with that one, and not with that one. It's two. Well, there we well have played, it. Well played, Dawn. Dawn Heyman adds a third New South Wales State Championship title to her collection. Or is it a fourth? It's a fourth. Fourth. Well, she hasn't lost anything. At least she was in four events, wasn't she? Yes. <laughs> a third, a third of the uh, the major events and the mixed pairs as well, which I suppose is now one of our major events. Uh, thank you, Tony, for joining us in commentary, and thank you, Lee, for your contribution. He's now busily preparing for our presentation ceremony. Uh, don't forget to join us in just a little while for the men's singles final. We're coming to you live from Club Dubbo. You can keep up with the final scores or everything else on uh, Bowlslink, results.bowlslink.com.au. And uh, for now, we'll sign out from Club Dubbo in the 2023-24 New South Wales State Championship Finals. Uh, we'll be back with you in just a little while with the men's final.